Mr. Assistant Speaker, I ask that this um, notice be postponed. Thank um, you. Thank you. I call the clerk for the next item of business. <laughs> Notice of motion, General Notice number 2533, Prince of Wales Hospital bed closures. I call the member for Macquarie Fields. Uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, I move member for Monero, as I call. that this House calls on the Minister for Health to explain her role in and prior knowledge of the closure of 26 beds at Prince of Wales Hospital, and two, for the Minister to reverse this closure. Mr Deputy Speaker, on the 19th of February 2013, Dr Patrick Bolton, the Senior Administrator at Prince of Wales, sent this email out. This email should be on the hand side for all time as a reminder to everybody as to what happens in the New South Wales health system under this government. All, please find reproduce stage one of this proposed consolidation for information and subsequent action that is relevant. Please note and will require an act on the following points. I am advised that under policy it is the Minister that makes the determination to close wards and that this aspect of the consolidation is being addressed through the government. This is stage one. I am not at liberty to discuss further stages with you and will do so when I am able. The expectation is that allied pharmacy and medical services will be reduced pro rata with these changes. Stage 1 essentially requires the closure of one of the two wards on Parks Level 7. In brackets, there are other bed closures, but I accept that these are marginal. I am therefore required to reduce staff in the disciplines noted who work on one of the two Parks wards. Since the decision as to which of the two Parks wards to close one for the program of surgery has not been made yet, I need advice from you about how many FTE, that's full-time equivalents, you, you staff each of the P7E and P7W separately. You may have noticed that applications have not been approved on Mercury, Mr Deputy Speaker. What that means is vacancies are not being filled, and I will be unable to progress these until I have received this advice from you and received plans, or advice from you how to plan to reconcile vacancies with any new positions you are seeking to fill. For clarity on this advice, I will require advice from each of the defined allied health disciplines, pharmacy and the NWU. As always, happy to discuss Patrick. That's Patrick Bolton. Immediate closure of eight beds on Park 6, with additional four beds closed in rehab, four closed beds on Park 9W, six beds on Park 8 and four beds on uh, uh, Free South. Mr Speaker, that makes a total of 26 beds. This is a memo in February about the closure of 26 beds. By April 1 to 13, ward closure on Parks Level 7 confirmed, gastro to relocate to V4B. Mr Deputy Speaker, under the Health Services Act, it is quite clear, 1997, that the Minister is responsible for the closure of wards. Section 31 of the Health Services Act clearly states that a local health district must, before implementing any decision to exercise its functions, under subsection 1 or 2, notify the Director General of the decision and ensure that the decision is appropriate having regard to the functions of the local health district. It is there in black and white under the Health Services Act, which is why Dr Bolton told the staff that the Director General and therefore the Minister would be notified and involved in this closure. Since then, the Minister has done whatever she can to deny all responsibility for this. As she said, war changes are a matter for local management. That is wrong. The Health Services Act is quite clear. They are, closure of wards is not a matter for local management. The Director-General must be notified. It states that our local health district may make changes to the health service as it thinks necessary. Mr Deputy Speaker, this the Minister has her fingerprints all over this closure. Rubbish. This goes, I know the interjection from that opposite, rubbish. You know that I'm telling the truth. Because if you were, 50 per cent of all patients government benches will come to work. the emergency department at four hours would not be there. Order. I've also been, but this is, the Minister has form on this. I've been told oh, that right. senior management and now advise staff there are to be 200 voluntary redundancies at Prince of Wales. When the minister was asked about this in estimates, they were deliberately evasive. Deliberately evasive. 
The uh, word is there are no plans to offer uh, clinical redundancies. They, the definition of what is a clinical worker is very rubbery. There are 200 voluntary redundancies with letters to be posted, and I expect those opposite to deny that there will be any redundancies offered at Prince of Wales over the next six months. Only a clear denial from those opposite will be believed. Since this uh, email was sent, Andrew Bernard, the General Manager of uh, Prince of Wales, a decent, ethical, highly skilled and committed bureaucrat has left. He is one of many who are finding it increasingly difficult to work in the system. Only 7% of the 1,200 doctors who were asked about the health system by the AMA said that things have improved in the last two years. The minister can spin whatever they like. The government can spin whatever they like. But what is happening on the ground and what is said in here are on two different planets. Today we know about Demi Ellul, a 17-year-old girl who, with appendicitis, which can and does kill people, was forced to lie nine hours in the ward in the emergency at Campbelltown Hospital on the floor with a blanket. The bed that Demi Ellul needed is there, it was built less than 10 years ago. It has been mothballed by this government. The staff, the nursing staff who wanted to work there, have not been given jobs. This is all since 2011. These closures are all since 2011. What we will hear is from those opposite is all sorts of spin, but until the secrecy is stopped, until this government and this minister stops treating vital health statistics as a state secret, the people who will suffer most will be those who need the care under the New South Wales public health system. This is the minister's responsibility. The decisions are closures are her responsibility. She's not even in the House to discuss these issues. We need to hear from her today as to what has happened to the beds of Prince of Wales and what she's going to do about the increased waiting times that uh, Prince of Wales Emergency Department is experiencing. The question is that the motion is moved by the member for Macquarie Fields be agreed to. I call the member for Coogee. Well, thank you, Mr Speaker. I think uh, for the benefit of the students in the gallery today, they might want to uh, Look up the uh, the word snollygoster means uh, deceitful mean? politician, and that's what we've heard from exactly. uh, the other side. Deceitful yeah. politics. Oh, yeah. The fact yeah. is that the Prince of Wales Hospital has more funding than it's ever had, and it's treating more patients than it ever oh, ever true. has it's 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 ever will. Oh. This year, it'll treat more patients than it ever has in its history. Oh, it the fact true. is, there's a record capital works program going on at uh, Prince of Wales Hospital. There's record funding in the local area health district and Prince of Wales is making changes to the way they deliver services so they can continue to deliver first-rate quality health services to the, the, member, the people of the eastern Sydney, Sydney-wide Sydney -wide and indeed all of New South Wales. The fact is I know the member for, the member for Macquarie Fields who has just spoke then, he's an honourable man but he's been put up to dishonourable politics by those those in the shadow cabinet, those in the shadow cabinet that want to fuel that want to fuel lies. But what a, what's this all about? What's this all about? Where has it come from? It's a it's a deceitful scare campaign. It's a traditional scare campaign which is used because we have a federal election coming up in one week's time, and that's what it is. And the member for the is trying to rescue his mate, Matt Tisselthwaite, who's oh, running oh, in, oh, running oh, in the second seat, is running in the seat of Hughes's seat. And you know what they've got to campaign on? What have they got to campaign on at a federal level? What have they got? What federal issues have they got to campaign on? Nothing. Order. Nothing whatsoever. Not a thing. All we hear is the scare campaign repeatedly stirred up by those three opposite who know better. Here's Dr McDonald, a paediatrician, a paediatrician who knows the health service and he knows the lies that he's peddling. That is, it's, it's been an absolute dis disgrace. This is more about the saving a mate in the Labor Party, saving a mate in the Labor Party in the South East, another a head office boy from the Labor Party, Matt Desselswaite, saving him rather than about delivering the good quality health services that we have 
and will continue to get out of the Prince of Wales Hospital. I'd like to move an amendment, Mr. Uh, Mr. Speaker. I move, I move that the amend that the motion be amended in the following to omit all words after that and insert instead this House one welcomes the Prince of Wales record initial expenditure budget of $375 million in 2012-2013, two, supports the Minister for Health's policy of devolution that empowers local, local health districts, hospital managers and clinicians to make decisions at a local level in the best interests of patients and thanks the doctors, nurses and support staff at Prince of Wales for their tireless efforts to improve patient care. Mr. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, you just have to go out to the Prince of Wales Hospital campus. They might like to visit it occasionally and see that the record works which are taking place out there. There's a massive hole in the ground at the moment, which is a brand new cancer centre going in. It's going to be a, a, a centre of excellence in, in this part of the world. We've got the new uh, clinical services wing for the uh, 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 children's hospital. We've had the new mental health wing open, all within the time of this government. Record spending on local, uh, in the local area on health services. And what do, what do we see? Nothing but a scare campaign for Shameless. those officers. Shameless. They have nothing to hold their heads up high about. Bring it on, Bring it on. Nothing to hold up their, their heads up, up high about at a federal level. The fact is, the fact is, the federal government cut $100 million off the New South Wales health budget, and there was not not a whisper out of those officers. Right. Not a whisper. $100 million straight taken away from New South Wales health for rehabilitation services and not a whisper out of those officers. Because, why? Because they, they can't hold their heads up high. They hang them in shame at their record, not only their record at a federal level, which they're about to pay a price for next week, but also for the 16 wasted, disgraceful years that they served in this parliament and did absolutely nothing. The fact is that you have nothing, nothing to be proud of for the 16 wasted years that you spent in this government except for the billions and billions of dollars that you wasted. Order. The House will come to order. The House will come to order. The member for Coogee has the call. Yeah, chuck her out, Mr Speaker. Uh, order. I don't need advice from you. Continue your speech. It was good advice. The member for Parramatta is on two calls. The member for Cobra. What are they called? We have. Member for Monero have, is on two calls. We have fabulous, hard-working doctors, nurses, and support staff at the Prince of Wales Hospital that are doing a great job, and those opposite should be congratulating them for delivering quality health services, not running a scare campaign, a scare campaign that they cannot, they cannot uh, provide the figures to justify, only the spin. So once again. Remember that word, Snolly Gosta, and remember, stick it to the Australian Labor Party because that's, it's, 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 that's what it, they're full of. And uh, you just, uh, for, for 16 years, the wasted opportunities, the wasted opportunities from those opposite when you should be supporting our doctors, nurses, and those that get on with delivering quality services. Order, the question is that the motion is moved by the member for Macquarie Fields be agreed to. I call the member for Heffron. Oh, sorry, before we proceed, um, the member for Coogee, can I have a copy of your amendment, please? Good amendment. Thank you. Thank you. The member for Heffron. Uh, Mr Acting Speaker, I rise on a point of order, a standing order 160, 160 Stop requires, the clock. This is the point of order. requires an amendment to be relevant or generally relevant to the question proposed. Entirely the, 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 the amendment that is proposed by the member for Coogee is... is not even close. No, I rule the amendment is relevant to the motion. Um, are you going to be speaking on the motion or not? Yes. All right. Well, can we just restart the clock because that was a point of order. The member for Heffron. Mr. Acting Speaker, the motion proposed by the member for Macquarie Fields, the shadow of the Minister for Health, deserves support and is directly, directly relevant to one of the most important doctrines of the Westminster system, and that is accountability of the executive to Parliament and to this particular House. 
The motion requires an explanation by the Minister for Health in relation to a decision that she made closing 26 <coughs> beds at Prince of Wales Hospital and asking her to reverse that disclosure. Now, the Minister is accountable to this House for an explanation. Now, the Shadow Minister for Health hasn't done what often happens of condemning people for particular decisions. He hasn't come and beaten his chest and said the decision, the decision is disgraceful, disgraceful just to get some cheap tabloid headline. He's actually come into this House in a responsible way and proposed a motion to make the Minister for Health accountable to this House. And why wouldn't he? Because at a hospital that services my electorate as well as the electorate for the member for Coogee and the, and the member for Heffron and the member for Sydney, a ward with 26 beds has been closed. And as the, as the Shadow Minister for Health told this House, under Section 31 of the Health Services Act, the Minister must approve the closure. It is no good for the Minister to devolve health cuts to a health service and wipe her hands of it when the law places the responsibility in her hands. And one of the things that has happened to this government is it has been inveigled by the Treasury boffins to make cuts in health services across the board for the purposes of the bean counters to determine policy. Now I'm telling you the economic rationalists and bean counters of the Treasury who have actuarial costing on everything, even cost human life. Now we all know, we all know that the health system is a bottomless pit, and the government it will it will within 15 years usurp the entire state government budget. But the people in New South Wales are entitled to a roll goal health system, and they aren't entitled to Treasury boffins cutting money out that directly impacts upon the quality of health care. And you know from what you know, Mr Acting Speaker, as does this House know from not just nurses and doctors and health workers who are complaining bitterly about the pressure they're under and the lack of patient care, but even from the honorary medical officers who are railing against the closure of beds and closure of wards at this hospital. And what happens when you pressure, when you, when you pressure the health workers and the doctors and the, and, and the medical practitioners, errors occur. The sort of tragic error that occurred yesterday at Campbelltown, of which Campbelltown Hospital apologised for in their paediatric unit. And when the, when the Shadow Minister for Health comes into this House and expresses his concern, he's not just doing it to get a, a, public, health, a public health or tabloid headline. He is a practising paediatrician pedi who practises on an honorary basis to, to ensure that he knows what's going on in the health system. He generally cares about the health system. He doesn't come in, in here like every other shadow minister for the last 30 years and wants to hang the health minister because he just simply beds are being closed. I mean, people are sick, people are concerned, people are not being admitted in a hospital where they should be. The beds are being closed, and, and all the opposition wants is the minister to be accountable to this house and to explain herself to explain that she closed a blind eye, she did not exercise a power under the Health Services Act, like she should have been, like the law requires her to do, or to admit that she did actually know and has misled this House. Order. The question is that the motion is moved by the member for Macquarie Fields be agreed to. Before I call the member for Hawkesbury, can I acknowledge in the gallery uh, members of the Retired Transport uh, Workers Association of New South Wales who are in the gallery, who are my guests here in the Parliament today. Uh, welcome to the Parliament of New South Wales. Uh, we're currently debating a general business notice of motion moved by the member for Macquarie Fields, uh, and it, uh, it, the debate is uh, going on, and you'll be able to see part of that today in the Parliament. I call the member for Hawkesbury. Thank you very much, uh, Mr Acting Speaker. Mr, uh, Mr Acting Speaker, can I also acknowledge the uh, former transport workers in the gallery and as an, uh, as an old transport provider, an old, an old busy working in the transport industry at uh, Benori Bus Company for, uh, for 22 years, I also welcome you to the Chamber of the New South Wales Parliament. Unfortunately, unfortunately you uh, got here just in time 
to, uh, to be once again horrified by a scandalous motion that's been brought before the New South Wales Parliament this morning, a scandalous motion, outrageous claim uh, by the member for Macquarie, and uh, the government uh, will uh, the government will endeavour to uh, correct uh, to correct those uh, those mistruths on behalf of the people of New of course, South Wales. Mr. Acting Speaker, uh, this government makes absolutely no apologies <coughs> about improving the efficiency of our departments. But we will never, ever compromise the health of the people of New South Wales through those reforms. And I think, I think it would be fair to say that the people of New South Wales got a very, very good look at the health industry prior to our election in March 2011. There were some horrific outcomes in health prior to the election of the O'Farrell government through the neglect, through the irresponsible mismanagement of the previous New South Wales AOP government. And so it's a little bit rich for them now to rise up in Parliament and blame us at a time loss. when we are investing record amounts of funding oh, into the New South Wales health system. And I've often said, I've often said there is no greater uh, or nor genuine, uh, nor, nor genuine comment in relation to that than the $300 million of funding that we are investing into Blacktown Hospital. Blacktown, in the heart of Western Sydney, in that rapidly growing region, is not an area that we will politically ever have as part of the National Party or the, uh, or the Liberal Party. It is in safe Labor hands. However, we recognise the importance of making that record investment into that particular area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But just to dispel some of, the, uh, some of the myths that have been raised here this morning, the final bed consolidations in relation to, uh, to Prince of Wales Hospital were signed off by the Northern Sector Clinical Council on March 11, 2013, communicated widely to the staff on the 15th of March, which involves the consolidation of 30, 37 beds, uh, of which uh, the, uh, there has been a realignment of surgical specialty beds with no loss of specialty services. No loss of specialty services whatsoever. The Hospital Clinical Council and Local Health District Board are working together to ensure the Prince of Wales Hospital can treat more patients with reduced costs. That's called efficiency, Mr Acting Speaker. And as I said before, this government will never apologise for creating efficiencies which improve our departments, which save us money so that we can spread the dollar further. We will be a government that will not waste taxpayers' dollars. We recognise how hard the taxpayers of New South Wales work, and we recognise how hard we have to work to stretch those dollars further. The Prince of Wales hospital expenditure budget has not been reduced. Another fact that we will dispel that myth. It, it has not been reduced. It has been increased since March 2011, but the hospital's costs have increased over four years, exceeding its budgets, which, have been high, which, is, which is absolutely natural, because costs always go up. South Eastern Sydney Local Health District received a record budget this year of $1.47 billion, an increase, an increase for the member of the Bills, who unfortunately is absent without leave whilst, uh, whilst we are uh, correcting his mistruths, uh, an increase of some $58.5 million uh, from the 2012-2013 financial year. The Prince of Wales Hospital will be treating more patients this year than it did last year. So on behalf of the people in the gallery, as wonderful uh, retired transport workers who are here today, uh, we've corrected the mistruths that are being spread around by the member from Macquarie Fields. This is a government that will be applying itself completely to the health of the New South Order. The speaker's time has expired. The question is that the motion is moved by the member from Macquarie Fields be agreed to. I call the member for Marubra. Well, Mr Speaker, it's intriguing that the government would have the member for Hawkesbury, which is a long way away from Prince of Wales, come in to speak oh, upon this motion. The salient question, the principal question in respect of this debate is where is the minister? Why is the Minister for Health not in the chamber to defend herself? Because the motion directly calls upon her to explain Member, herself. Member for Monero. Member for Monero. So that's the first question. Where's the Minister? The second question is, why is the Member for Coogee so foolhardy enough to come in here and with respect to the most important institution, not only in his electorate, but in the region, Prince of Wales Hospital, why is he so foolhardy? enough to come in here and try and stick up for cuts to a hospital. There is one thing that a community will not forgive of its local member, and that is if the local member refuses to stick up for them, regardless of whether the wrong is being done to them by his or her own political party or another. The test for a good local member is whether they stick up 
for their troops. And in, and in respect of order, the member for Oakley, the Prince of Wales Hospital, the member for Monero, the physics speak for themselves. The member for Oakley, if there is record funding, as the member for Coogee says, to Prince of Wales Hospital, why are why is a ward closed? Why are 37 beds closed? Why is Parks Ward 7 now closed and empty and the lights are off and the beds are disconnected and the power's off and there's no staff? If there's record funding, why, why are they sacking people from the hospital? If there's record funding, why are our letters about to go out to 200 staff telling them that they no longer have a job? The member for Coogee wants to cite the, uh, the Cancer Centre and the Neurosciences Building as evidence that treatment is increasing at the hospital. The Cancer Centre is a wonderful initiative. It was, a co it was a commitment of the Keneally government, $45 million, and I'm glad, I'm glad that the government, the present government, has decided to, to continue with that funding. The Neurosciences Building, again, $9 million committed by the Keneally government, and I'm glad that the federal government is continuing with that funding. The Neurosciences Building doesn't treat a single soul, and the Cancer Centre is currently under construction. We're talking about recurrent funding here, and the fact is beds and wards are being closed at Prince of Wales Hospital. If it wasn't, you wouldn't have Professor Colbatch from the Prince of Wales Medical Research Council, who um, acts on behalf of the peak body of visiting medical officers at the hospital, passing a motion earlier this year condemning the closures and condemning the cuts. When doctors condemn cuts and closures at the hospital they work at, you know something is wrong. Now, Mr Deputy Speaker, um, the, uh, the member for Coogee says that this is all about uh, posturing for the federal election next week. Well, I remind the member for Coogee, I remind the member for Coogee that I could that the, that the shadow minister for health the member for Macquarie yeah, the member for put on this court. motion on the business paper on the 12th of March 2013 and that, and that I spoke about these the on the 27th of February 2013. But whilst we're talking about the federal election, let's have a, have a discussion about the candidate, the Liberal candidate for Kingston Smith. He's a doctor. He hasn't said one single thing about these closures. Like the member for Coogee, he refuses to stick up for the people that he aspires to represent. He's going from candidate forum to candidate forum, and in response to claims by Matthew Thistlethwaite that these cuts are occurring, he says they're not true. Until the order, nurses order, turn the out, sure until the nurses turn out, 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 can I remind, Minister, when I ask a member to resume their seat, you will do so or you will find yourself outside of the chamber. Pick him out. The Minister. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My point was that the honourable member was making disparaging comments about somebody who has not got no access to... Yes, quite right, and I uphold, I uphold that point of order. I would remind members... Grubby, grubby, grubby. It is a point of order. Read the standing orders. The member for Murray Darling. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's, uh, it's a very interesting sitting in listening to this debate and uh, listening to the analogy that's uh, been devised in regards to decision making for hospitals. And it's interesting to note that the New South Wales Government was ha happy to adopt Kevin Rudd's guidelines for health networks. Now, part of those guidelines gave autonomy to those local networks to make decisions about how they manage the hospitals, how they manage the budget, and how money right, okay. will be spent and how they'll be staffed. Now, that's the model that we adopted by, by the, 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 the Labor Prime Minister of Australia at the time, Kevin Rudd. We supported that. And what we are seeing now is that in action, and all of a sudden, the Labor members are enraged. Now, what they're about, what they're about is this is just, I mean, the, the sad part about the health port portfolio, uh, it, it, you know, the, the opposition loves to run a scare campaign. It doesn't have to have any truth in it. It doesn't have to have any reason. It doesn't have to have anything behind it. As long as there's an opportunity for someone to make a comment that criticises health in some area of the state, and they'll jump up, move a motion, and start criticising the health services in this state. Let me tell you that in 16 years, 
uh, what we saw there uh, was a health system that was going nowhere. Quite on, the, the federal government, thanks to the federal government, and I accept that interjection from the member of Macquarie Fields. Yes, there were hospitals built, as they still are being built today, and the federal, federal government funded them. That's all part of the process. But the fact is, we can always find something to scare the population with when we discuss health. And what this is all about, what this is all about is doing it, and it just so happens it times up with a federal election, a federal election where you've got Kevin Rudd running around making statements about nurses losing their jobs, teachers losing their jobs, and all the scare campaign that's run by Labor, knowing full well that nurses are employed by the states, teachers are employed by the states, but they'll say anything, anything to create that scare campaign. Now, what we see here, whatever the circumstances are, it's about a health network that made the decision, a health network that is following the guidelines that have been established under a Labor Prime Minister. And all of a sudden, they don't like that. They've got a criticism and they land it back into the Minister of Health's lap. And I can tell you uh, that the Minister of Health that we've got today knows full well about the 16 years of Labor. She knows about all the failures and she is, and she is not going to come in and repeat those failures that we saw. And I mean, there was one minister that uh, uh, just ran from one bit of chaos to the other. But the fact is, if we want to go running around, running scare campaigns about the health service, we are going to affect uh, the morale of the people of New South Wales. This is an area that you want to be very, very accurate about your criticism, because if you want to run on whatever whatever's said in the health area, that you can create some sort of motion to scare the population, which, which is what you're doing. Uh, and it, I think it's totally and absolutely irresponsible, and it's destroying the morale of people in this state. Order. Order. Uh, before I uh, call the next speaker, I just wish to reverse my previous ruling in relation to Mr Fenley. Can I just remind members, however, that when they are exercising their freedom of speech in this place, verbose and ostentatious as it may be, please be careful, but I uh, apologise to the member from Maruba. Uh, I withdraw that ruling. and. Uh, and there, there is no standing order in that respect. Uh, however, however, I do remind members that they have parliamentary privilege and to exercise it with due caution. The question is that the motion is moved by the member for Macquarie Fields be agreed to. I call the member for Macquarie Fields in reply. Thank you, Mr Deputy uh, Speaker. This motion here goes to the heart of citizens right of health care oh, oh, that's under this government. Yeah. That's, that's the, thing. the basic the principle of Westminster no democracy to to is ministerial responsibility. The Health Minister has a duty the governor, to the people of New South Wales yeah, to explain right. no, right. what is going on in the health system to them. Um, but you can, you can make this current to, government you can treats the vital health statistics yeah. as a state secret. And they do so to prevent the scrutiny that the people of New South Wales need to be able to make informed decisions about allocation of health resources. The future of the health system has to be the ending of this secrecy. If we want things to remain as good as they are now, and we do have one of the world's better health systems, as Garling said and as I freely acknowledge, the system has to change. That's under the last I note the interjection of the member this for um, no. Koji <laughs> about it's getting better on us. That would make him one of the 7 per cent of the 1,200 doctors who, with many years' experience in the health system, felt that things had actually improved under this government. A minority of 7 per cent is not one I would like to be. Not only is the minister morally bound to notify the people of the state what's going on. She's morally bound to debate a motion such as this rather than sending the members for Hawkesbury, Broken Hill and Coogee to a debate in a hospital in the eastern suburbs of Sydney. She's also legally required under the Health Services Act, which if she had wished to devolve responsibility for board closures would have been part of the amendments that were passed on the first day of this parliament in 2011. When it comes to redundancy letters, all I can say is watch this space. A, um, a 
there was a very interesting exchange in the estimates uh, debate about redundancy letters. The Minister claimed to have no knowledge whatsoever of redundancy letters. Those redundancy letters, I'm sure, are printed and saved and will be going out. There will be a couple of hundred redundancies in the South East Sydney Local Health District published sometime after the election. I know that because in the memo of Patrick Bolton when he said I'm not at liberty to discuss, again, the response from the administration is I'm not at liberty to discuss. We know the member for Broken Hill talked about the need for accuracy. The reason I read Dr Patrick Bolton's email directly on the hand side was precisely for that reason. The people of New South Wales need to know exactly what the administrators oh, no, are no, saying that talent. That talent. so that they can make informed decisions about their care. <coughs> when coming back to Prince of Wales, Helen Westwood said, will we get an announcement after the federal election? There are a couple of jobs going at Prince of Wales. The minister said, please, management of Prince of Wales up to the local health district. So you cannot tell us, Minister, I cannot tell you. Well, I bet you she can. Uh, you, can you cannot, as Helen Westwood said, you cannot tell me whether there have been any hundred jobs going to Prince of Wales. The Minister said that would be highly unlikely. Highly unlikely? Yes, Minister said, highly unlikely. Well, we will so soon see if this is like something out of Yes, Minister, because those letters are saved on a drive somewhere in the Prince of Wales hospital computer system, just waiting for someone to press print. It is time that the 50,000 people who go to Prince of Wales Hospital have got the care they need. Less than 50 per cent are gone within four hours. That was before these cuts. It's just not good enough. Order. The original question, as proposed by the member for Macquarie Fields, was the original question to be agreed to. Following the moving of that motion, there was an amendment proposed by the member for Coogee. The question now is that the amendment, as proposed by the member for Coogee, be agreed to. All of that opinion, please say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. I think the ayes have it. Is there a division required? Please ring the bells.